Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. Just going to talk today to you about uh, Losartan alternatives, the blood pressure Losartan, and alternatives to this medication, including both medications as well as lifestyle changes. So the topics covered in this video, we'll, we'll just start off real quick what Losartan is. We'll talk about it's available in combination with other medicine. We'll talk about those. We'll talk about other medicines in the same family. It's in a family of medicines called ARBs. We'll discuss other classes of medications that can be used to control blood pressure uh, in place of Losartan. Then we're going to discuss a, a few studies about diet and lifestyle changes, see if we can kind of figure out what causes high blood pressure in many people. So what is Losartan? It's an angiotensin receptor blocker. It's used to treat high blood pressure. It has basically, its basic effect is that it ultimately causes the blood vessels to relax, lowers the pressure in the body. Uh, it's available in 25, 50, and 100 milligram tablets. It's also available in a combination product with HCTZ or hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide is a mild diuretic or water pill. The combination of the two can be very effective at bringing blood pressure down. In the US, the uh, single ingredient product sold as COZAR, um, and the combination product sold under the brand name Hyzar. There have been some recalls as of late. It's caused some shortages of this medication, especially um, where I work, I've been seeing some shortages in the combination product. But there's been recalls across this whole family of medications that has caused the difficulty in getting some of the medications in stock. So some of the ARBs or ARBs include candesartan, erbesartan. Erbesartan's also had some recalls, so that one has been a little short. I do have a separate video on the losartan recall. Essentially, there was a contaminant found in some of these blood pressure medications very small amount, but if that were taken over the course of years, it could increase the risk of developing cancer. So they were call, they were recalled. Omasartan, or uh, the US brand name Benacar, as well as Valsartan, or Diovan is the brand name. Valsartan also had some recalls. So at this time, at the time I'm making this video, we have seen some shortages in this whole family of medications. So, if you cannot get that medicine, it may be time to consider an alternative. Of course, this would be something you'd have to discuss with your healthcare provider. But ACE inhibitors, probably the best alternative. They're actually older than the ARBs, but they have a similar effect in the body. Um, along, we have a lot of data on these. They've been on the market a long time and seem like they can be used safely for many years. Benazapril or Lotensin. Uh, Enalapril, brand name Vasotec in the U.S. Lisinopril, probably the most popular of the ACE inhibitors, uh, was sold under the brand name Prenavil and Zestorel. Quinapril or generic Acupril, Ramapril or gen uh, generic for all tastes. All potential options to replace Losartan if you cannot get it. Again, this is something you'd chat about with your PCP or your provide your healthcare provider. There are, of course, other medications, other classes of medications that can be used to control blood pressure, like beta blockers, medications like metoprolol, calcium channel blockers, like amlodipine um, are also options. Of course, diuretics we touched on a little bit, like hydrochlorothiazide, chlorthalidone, others uh, sometimes used, especially if there seems to be extra fluid. Um, and there, there are, of course, many different options available, something you could chat with your, your doctor again about. So why do we have high blood pressure? Why does it seem to be so common today? What well, it does seem modern life really contributes to that. Diet, there's a lot of processed food easily available at low prices. Um, we don't exercise like we should, we don't get proper sleep and we don't manage our stress. I, I, I have fallen victim to all of these things. It just, it's part of modern life. We really need to examine if we're willing to live with the side effects of our modern life. Many of these, it's, it's fantastic we have medications that can help mitigate the problems due to modern lifestyle, but what if we make changes to that lifestyle? How much 
what do we have to do to reduce the side effects of our modern lifestyle? What about sugar sweetened beverages? Soda, soda. I would include fruit juice. I get a lot of pushback when I tell people they shouldn't drink juice. I think it's you just get too much sugar in one sitting. One glass of juice is like the juice of several fruits. It's eat the fruit, get the good fiber with it. It's a more satiating and you get less sugar. Um, it, but so back to mainly soda and, you know, like sweet tea, things like that. A lot of, um, iced coffee beverages, boy, there's a lot of sugar, a lot of the, um, expensive coffee drinks, the mochas, the things like that. Loads of sugar, occasional treat, probably fine daily. Yeah, you might pay for the side effects with it. So what, what's the conclusion of sugar sweetened beverages? If you reduce the consumption of these, it was significantly associated with reduced blood pressure. So if you're drinking sugar sweetened beverages every day and you have high blood pressure, it does seem there's a pretty good chance your high blood pressure is a side effect of your sugar sweetened beverages. Now, again, always talk to your doctor before you make any changes to your diet. I'm not recommending any dietary changes, just some food for thought here. What about, so I'll just switch to artificially sweetened beverages, diet soda. Is that associated with uh, increase in blood pressure? They are both, both sugar sweetened and artificially sweetened beverages are associated with high blood pressure or hypertension. So it, that's uh, some I've fallen victim. I used to drink several diet sodas every day. Before that, I drank several sodas each day. Once I quit, I drank coffee, tea, and soda. Or no, not soda. I drink coffee, tea, and water. Um, it's amazing how your palate changes. Occasionally, I'll have a sip of soda, and it's just not satisfying like it used to be. Once you stop it and your body adjusts to these other beverages. It, I was surprised because I, I drank a six pack plus daily for a few years, but once I quit, I, I enjoy drinking water. I like coffee. I like tea. It's amazing um, how quickly your, your taste can change. What about sleep? A lot of us don't get uh, good sleep. What about that shortened night sleep? Is that going to lead to a high blood pressure? Well, of course it is. Habitually short sleep durations lead to the development of high blood pressure. We know that, but we need to think about this. I mean, are we willing to live with the side effects of our lifestyle or can we make some changes? I mean, I can make time to binge watch that, my favorite series on Netflix. Maybe I could go to bed an hour earlier every night for myself to take care of my body. I mean, these are things we need to think about. It's if, if we're not willing to make those changes, then most likely we have to be willing to take some sort of treatment uh, to keep that blood pressure under control because untreated high blood pressure puts one at risk of heart attack and stroke, other cardiovascular events. What about exercise, right? Exercise is good for us. Um, the, in the Journal of Sports Medicine, uh, the British Journal, again, I have um, all the links to these studies in the the show notes below, so be sure you check that out. Um, of course, exercise is beneficial. There are not many head-to-head -head studies, though, so it's uh, they concluded it's understudied, especially in people already with high blood pressure. But it does seem like they can achieve some reductions in blood pressure. Basically, they're saying it seems all right, but we need more studies. So I appreciate you for watching this video. Uh, be sure you always talk to your healthcare provider before you stop medicine, start medicine, make changes to your diet or lifestyle. I hope you found some of this medicine or some of this medicine, some of this information useful. I hope it's kind of food for thought just to kind of look at our lifestyle, see what we're doing and make some changes. It's, uh, and ask questions uh, below in the comments. And if you found this info useful, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Thank you.